For these videos, we're going to talk a bit more about materials. We'll come over here. Um, I've got my material editor open. We'll come over here and start going through these one by one, discussing them. You're never going to use them. Well, I don't want to say never. You're mostly not going to use them just by themselves. You're usually going to use them in some sort of a combination. But I think it really helps, at least it did um, for me when I was learning it, to go through them individually and see what they do individually. And then we can start talking about recipes. So how do you start putting together these in a way to create what you want? Okay, so I want to start by breaking it down by starting with what each one is and what each one does. So you can see over here what I did was I lined up um, a series of my sprites and then I assigned each one of them a different slot on my material editor. And to start with, I gave them a base color. Each one of these has a base color. Um, when we go in here, we'll change this. For now, I just did it to organize myself. If I had a whole bunch of sprites across here that were all the same color <clears throat> and a whole bunch of empty slots up here that were white or gray or the same color, I wouldn't be able to keep this organized. The human brain, useless trivia, um, the human brain organizes best and recognizes quickly through color. So, for instance, this sprite is yellow. I know that that slot has been assigned to that sprite. And as I go down, or over, oops, I might have been down at the bottom. Okay, now it's not cooperating with me. But you'll see I've got other, scroll over here, I've got other colored slots in here. That sprite goes with that slot. See how easy that is? So I just did this to, to stay organized, and I changed my base color. The default is white, and so when we go through these, the first thing I'll do is I'll return that to the default state, and then we'll go through <clears throat> each of these. I um, hope that makes sense. Okay, so um, I'm zoomed in on the first one. I don't know, you can't see that very well. Um, I did set it up to show the lighting, but this is what it did. However, um, I've done some renderings over here. Let me show you. Um, this is this is this character just rendered with nothing applied to him. Actually, he's just got a base color of red. So this is this is the de the default. Let's change this to white. Okay and then render him out. And you see, that's that's what I'm starting with. This is sort of my blank canvas. The <clears throat> uh, lighting and environment here is just set up as the, the sun and sky environment. Um, so that way I didn't have to mess with lighting. But I did add a light right in front of him so you can see how light affects with shadows and specular highlights in the diffuse color. Okay. So this is just the, the base object. Now, coding, we're gonna start with coding, and this is gonna end up being a series of videos because I've got a limit of 15 minutes for a video that I can lo load into uh, YouTube. So I'm gonna break this down, okay? Um, we're gonna start with the coding, and for coding, what you have is the amount, all right? The default amount is zero. Now, um, coating, and the subcategory here is clear coat, basically what it is similar to is when you lacquer something or varnish something, um, put a resin over it, um, nail polish on top of nails, um, the final coat of paint, that clear coat on top of car paint is um, exactly what a clear coat is. The default is zero, but the slider, which you can scroll up, to get a higher amount is a percentage. So all the way at zero is none. Scrolling up, that's 39%, 57%, 100%, okay? So this is how much of this clear coat do you want to be applied. So you can apply a small amount or a thick amount, right? So this is just how much. So this is the control. This is the color. Now, I'm gonna select a color so you can see this. Um, I think I was working with this kind of cool orangish color. No, it shows over here. I can never get this thing quite right. There we go. Um, okay, so this is, and you see it's changed the slot. And so now when I render him out, 
you see it's, the clear coat has changed the color of my Sprite. And I'm going to put this all the way at 100%. So you see how that changes. Now, we want to set some other parameters because putting the clear coat on there really doesn't differentiate him a whole lot from just the default color underneath if it was a base color. We want to talk about um, roughness and index of refraction. Okay, so with the roughness, if you hover over it, it will tell you that the glossiness um, of the specular reflections is controlled by this number and that the lower the value, the sharper the reflection. So at zero, we've got kind of plastic, you know, on plastic, the highlights on a plastic character are kind of sharp like this. If we change this, what it should do, and you see it kind of happened over here, is it softens out those specular highlights. And it looks more like something gooey, Vaseline, or greasy, rather than plastic. And I hate to use those terms, but that's what it looks like to me. Okay, so the other thing that we want to control down here is index of refraction, and if you hang out over that, um, the default is 1.5, um, and it just says index of refraction, <laughs> but it doesn't tell you what it does. Okay, this is what it does. Um, index of refraction has to do with how light bounces off of an object. As we increase this number, I'm going to increase this to somewhere around, let's try 3. A little over 3 there. Okay, and now when I render this, Oh, sorry, I had to reduce my roughness. I forgot to reset that. It does nothing with my roughness all the way up there because now it starts to look more like a candle. Okay, let's take this back to zero. Now render this out. Now you see that well, how that index of refraction makes a difference. And that starts to look more like car paint or nail polish or something that has been lacquered. Okay, so to achieve this, I moved my clear coat up to one, I changed my color, I, well, my roughness is, there we go, zero, and then my index of refraction went from 1.5 to 3.42. And then here, yep, I've already done that one, I saved that one earlier. And then here's if I change the color, so you can change the color so you can see um, changing the color makes a difference, um, and what that, that does. But this now looks and feels more like it's been coated rather than just have the base color changed. And let me pull this number up just a little bit more to show you that at some point you begin to reflect so much of what's around you that it starts to become mirror-like. Okay. I'm not sure. I've never really done this. Just good to play with it to see. There you go. So if you want to create a mirror, I would recommend changing the color to something more gray. Roughness at zero, clear coat at one, and my index of refraction is way over 30 now. And now you see I've created a mirror using the clear coat. My base parameter is is white. Okay? So I'm going to stop here and continue in the next video.